Grab yourself a refreshment. Get your posture up here. Let's be thankful for what we got. We have two legs, two arms, two eyes, two ears. And a big old cock. Ugh. Just joking. Grab yourself a drink. We get a hell of a show here. Two of my guests today's no showed. Love that. Had a full ass show planned and then they don't no show. So we'll see how we can do here. It's February, ladies and gentlemen. I got this vest here at a second hand store for $17.95. And I like it. So, other than that, here we go. Before we dive into today's show, let's spotlight the Phillips Law Foundation. These guys are all about giving back. They really are, including helping those experiencing homelessness at their outreach events. If you're in Arizona, text 602-666-5430 to join their volunteer services and be a part of something special. You can check out Phillips Law Foundation on social media and let's make our community better together. I'm here with my boy, my good buddy for a long time. Well, he actually came on the Timbo Sugar Show a couple times. Uh, Frankie, how you doing, Frank? How you doing? Doing good. And Frank is from, where are you from again? How you doing? No, no, you got to tell the guests. Frank. No, no, where are you from? Arabia. Arabia. Arabia, Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's doing again. Uh, that's my boy, Frankie boy. I was supposed to have Rick on uh, the show today. And Rick, he actually, he had a phone for a little bit. But his phone, of course, is off, and he's not answering. And I was supposed to pick him up at the bus station there at 10 a.m., and he wasn't there. Joe Riggs was supposed to come in also, but he had uh, something came up, and he wasn't able to come. So I love that. So now we're here. Fat cup of Joe. Got a busy day today. Did my newsletter this morning. Come here, bust out this pod. We have the advanced striking for... Um, the MMA competitors. After this, I'm going to go on Ariel Holani's show, and he put up a picture on his Instagram, and I look identical to Smiling Sam Alvey, uh, which, whatever. Not really worried about that. And then we got, we got the lowdown on uh, Xavier's recent story of his K, his knockout at the gas station. The, um, <laughs> the, the actual report came out, and it said something a little different. Let me find it here. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about why Xavier filled the need to do that. Okay, according to Peoria Police Chief Thomas Ittery, a police officer <laughs> was on patrol in the area of 91st and Peoria Avenues around 10.40 p.m. when the officer noticed a man acting suspiciously at a bus stop outside the closed business. Based on the man's behavior, the officer stopped. As the officer attempted to talk to the man, he ran away and into a nearby Circle K parking lot. Where Got he slipped by an innocent bystander. No, 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 zip it. He ran away into a nearby Circle K parking lot where he fell down. Police say that the man then rolled over, pulled a gun from his waistband, and pointed it at the officer who had been chasing him. The officer then shot the man. The short foot pursuit happened very quickly, Chief said. It was a rapidly evolving event, and it tells you how quickly things can change in our line of work. The officer, a three-year veteran of the department, wasn't hurt. The 43-year-old suspect was taken to the hospital where he later died. His name was not yet been released, pending notifications. And then one of my Patreon brothers also found the footage, the officer cam footage, and uh, dead ass. And Xavier was, no, Xavier was nowhere to be found, so he was trying to get away with and trying to make us believe that he knocked a grown man out with a <laughs> left hook. And, and some of y'all are super gullible. Oh, yeah, and since that was a fucking little lie. You were it running with that lie until you caught caught. Nah. Yeah. Bro, there was a bunch of people that knew the truth. A bunch of people. Just some people did it. Who? Capper. Dude, at hotmail.com. Y'all just, if you guys want, no, if you, just don't want it. No, you, but why do you feel the need to cap so much? I, I get it. that shit's funny. You want to be cool. No, nah, that shit was funny to me. But if you want to email Xavier, you can at Capper. Y'all took it too no, far. No, Capper at Hotmail.com is his new email, and uh, <laughs> he'll respond to all those. No, nah, so. but I was, at first it was supposed to be some like this little thing, and then it got t taken way too far. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. I but, feel that. For sure, you know. for sure, for sure. So Xavier <laughs> lost another job recently in the last couple of days. You got fired by old uh, Uncle Alex, did you? I, I don't know. I got fired. 
that's what he so. told me. <laughs> he says that. But he always says that. No show. No I'm that sh- person that literally goes to work with him when he need like he never like there'll be times when he needs somebody out of nowhere, he'll text me that day and I'll go and work with him that day out of the blue. He knows I'm that reliable person. He, <laughs> he can say whatever he wants, but at the end of the day, I'm the person that's there to help him all the mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. There when he needs you, 100%. I feel that. Uh, the beer for my horse is Toby Keith Singer. Dang it. Died at 62 years old. The country star had a stomach cancer and died peacefully, peacefully surrounded by his family. Stomach cancer. Fuck. Like, what led to him getting that? Do you ever wonder, like, even if you're healthy as fuck, like, you're just bound to get some shit? Well, I think, written in the I don't know if cancer r- runs in the genes. I don't know if it does. But, dude, if you can do your best at avoiding all the stuff that clearly con- causes cancer. Yeah, do your maybe best. Maybe you can't avoid it. Maybe you can't. Maybe, yeah. Well, I wonder how you would be able to know if it's a completely avoidable or it's just kind of like you're just bound to get it. Uh, yeah. No matter what. Yeah. That's I mean. Shit. What a, like, glyphosate? Glyphosate is in everything. Glyphosate is a broad-spectrum systematic herbicide and crop desiccant. It works by blocking an enzyme essential for plant growth. It's found in many weed killers like Roundup, and it has the potential to cause cancer. And that's what they spray all these foods with. They spray all these plants with. They spray oats with it, like if they're not organic. Any food that's not really true organic, it's probably sprayed with a bunch of glyphosate. And that shit causes cancer. Do you do your best to avoid that kind of stuff and eat a, the best you can? Yes, organic food's healthy. But if you do the best you can, I think you're up in your chances of not catching cancer. Grass-fed. Some good... I mean, we found. I found this... Uh, little meat shop it's called underbelly meat company here in uh, phoenix and they do grass-fed grass finished meats and this guy is so like proud of his meat hit, hit the cows that how beautiful the cows are and how beautiful the chickens are and it's just the most quality meats you can eat um so i've been shopping mm-hmm. there a little bit pretty expensive but uh frankie how you been i do i'm doing pretty <laughs> good uh you live around here do you live around here? You do? Well, same. Good to see you again. And uh, how's everything been going? It's cold out, isn't it? Cold? Mm-hmm. Too cold. <laughs> Too cold. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. All right, well, that's good. <laughs> uh, here we go. The newsletter. James Clear newsletter. This is some interesting stuff. And then I have so tons and tons of questions and topics and scenarios on Snapchat. We'll try to rapid fire through those. Uh, this first one here on uh, James Clear, it says, if you want a recipe for unhappiness, spend your time accumulating a lot of money and let your health and relationships deteriorate. That is true. That is true. You try to take care of your health, Xavier, or you don't give a fuck about it? Yeah, I try to be healthy. Do you? For sure. I try as hard as I can. Where are you living? I don't drink anything that's not unhealthy. Like everything, like I just drink water and fruit juices. And Jay, how how you, how's your diet been at home? I feel like it's been good. I I I, uh, I just eat like a lot of protein and like just steak, like red meat, and I try to eat pretty clean. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I've done a good job this fight camp at not getting really fat, but I really. This fight camp, I st- stayed away from bread. I'm not training hard, so I stayed away from bread. I stayed away from rice. I stayed away from English muffins, all this stuff. If you're not training hard and you're housing all these carbs, you're going to get fat. But then I was watching this guy get ready for the CrossFit games and how much. I mean, these guys train hard. They really do. They li- sometimes train three times a day. So he's eating heavy carbs. He's eating a bowl of organic oats. He's eating a Ezekiel English muffin with a two turkey sausage patties, an apple. He's, like, getting carved up, getting his muscles fueled up. So I, I'm about a week after getting the boot. They're stretching my Achilles out now. Once I can get back to training hard, I'm excited to get back some good carbs in my body, eating like a fucking man. Because I think a lot of people see that carnivore diet and see people eating like that. But if you're a young buck and you're training hard twice a day, I don't know if that's the best diet. It'd probably be good to add maybe some white rice or some carbs to help your muscles restore. 
I just got a rice cooker. Oh, you did? Yeah. Do you nice. have one? Rice cooker? Uh, yes, we do have one. They're fire, huh? They are nice. You just fucking click her down and and, and let her let her rip. Mariah does. Mariah sometimes cooks the rice with uh butter, butter, and then sometimes like beef bone broth. Oh yeah, that sounds good. And it's fuck really tasty and good. Uh, oh, what the hell happened? They're all recording. I think just one. Oh. So that's good. If you want a recipe for unhappiness, spending your time accumulating a lot of money and let your health and relationships de- deteriorate, that's true too. I think a lot of your overall happiness has to do with your relationships with the close people around you. A good relationship with your partner, a good relationship with your kids, good relationships at work. Um, I think that's good. Okay, number two here. Frankly, the most valuable items in your house might be a squat rack, a bench, and a set of weights. I thought I was purchasing gym equipment, but I was actually buying peace of mind. If you go on offer up in Craigslist, yeah, maybe you're not super cashy, but you go on offer up on Craigslist, people are selling their weights all the time. And having the little bit of a weight room at your house, in an extra room, wherever it's at, is so handy, dude. You don't have to pack your bags, go park your car, walk into the gym, deal that machine's taken, this machine's taken, you walk around, then you see some hot puss, then you're focused on maybe trying to riz her up a little bit. I just walk, wake up, throw on the sweats, straight to the garage and start working out a little bit, not worrying about that. Uh, That is true. And I've been loving that. First thing in the morning before anything else, waking up, getting a drink of water, heading to the weight room and just going on the airdyne. It's not even that hard. I'm not going, I'm not killing it. It's 10 minutes on the airdyne, five minutes on the ski erg, maybe some presses, maybe some pull-ups. Just get the body moving. I feel like my energy throughout the day has been way fucking better since doing that first thing in the morning. Number three, pay attention to how readily people talk themselves out of things and be wary of adopting the same narrative. People will often try to convince you their limiting beliefs should become your own. They do not. Find your own ceiling. I mean, that's... For sure, that happens a lot. People are like, you're so fucking stupid. You think you could beat Ilya? Ilya will kill you. Ilya will smoke you. Or or Gervonta will kill you. It's like, dude, that's your beliefs. That's the reason you're probably at the place you're working at your job, normal job at your life, because you don't believe you can do anything. Really? Don't tell a person who's doing it that what they can and can't do. If you'd ask someone two, three years ago, like, what do you think, Sean versus Peter... Peter Yon, they'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? Peter Yon would kill him. You're so fucking stupid. And then look what happens. Yeah. I read this book called The Magic of Thinking Big. I heard it in like a Tim Ferriss podcast. It's actually pretty Mm -hmm. fire. It talks about all that shit. I know. I have trouble with that too. I have trouble with like being like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this a goal and I'm going to go after it. I'm like, I don't, I'm not very good at that. Like goal setting? Yeah, like what? What do I? Like you are. What do I want? I think I'm more. I'm really good with like my consistent habits, but a goal setting. Like, what do I want for this gym? What's the end goal for this gym? I don't really even know. Or what's the end goal for the podcast? I mean, I'd be thinking that too, low key. I don't really know, but I'm just good at sticking with my good habits, and that seems to be leading in a good place. Okay, novelist and writer Margaret Yorkner on helping others become who they are and not. Who we want them to be. Our great mistake is to try to to exact from each person, to try to exact from each person virtues which he does not possess, and to neglect the cultivation of which he has. A little too deep, don't you think, Dave? <laughs> it's a little too deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you thinking of a... <laughs> mm-hmm. Executive performance coach Julie Garner on the power of better questions. The questions you ask yourself will largely determine the answers you get. Why am I not successful? You get the answers that berate you. How can I succeed here? You'll get the answers that push you. Question for you. Slow down for a minute. Close your eyes. Scan your body. Where are you holding tension right now? My cock. (laughs) Right? Um, Okay, let's go back here. That was, uh, we got, uh, let me catch up here a little bit. That's James Clear. What is it? Yeah, the James Clear newsletter. I like it every week. He's a pretty smart guy. He's the author of the Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits book, Mm -hmm. and now it's a good book. So this is the next one. Three ideas from me. You should always be rooting for the people you know, not only because you may need their support tomorrow, but did I already read this one? I think I might have read this one. Not only because you may need their support tomorrow, but also because it feels good to celebrate your friends coming up. 
Celebrate can rescue your day, even if it's someone else's victory. Envy will ruin your day, even if you're actually winning. Yeah, I mean, be happy for your fucking friends. Don't be jealous and be like, why not me? Uh, and then it's just a toxic behavior. It's like you. And people recognize it too, even when you think they can't. Like, There's so many people that you can sense that the jealousy and shit. And it's like, no, it's true. It's negativity. It is negative true. Negative vibrations. A lot of jealous people. Okay. When I go into a situation, I try to keep a mindset of baseline optimism. When starting the day, it's going to be a good day. When meeting someone new, I'm going to like them. When trying something challenging, it's going to work out. Problems will inevitably arise, and I'll deal with them as the situation demands. But my preference is, is to assume I'm on the winning path until proven otherwise. I liked what uh, Elon Musk said on Joe Rogan's podcast. He said, um, he said you might as well, it's better to be optim optimistic and wrong than pessimistic and right. I thought that was good. You might as well be fucking positive. When you meet someone, you might as well just give them a chance. Number three, I think about decisions in three ways. Hats, haircuts, and tattoos. Most decisions are like hats. Try one, and if you don't like it, put it back and try another. The cost of a mistake is low, so move quickly and try a bunch of hats. Some decisions are like haircuts. You can fix a bad one, but it won't be quick, and you might feel foolish for a while. Remember that, Dave, when you had that <laughs> cul-de-sac? That said, don't be scared of a bad haircut. Remember that, Dave? How many times you messaged me to take down the pod because of your haircut? <laughs> Trying something new That's is good. usually a risk worth taking. If it doesn't work out, by this time next year, you will have moved on and so will everyone else. A few decisions are like tattoos. Once you make them, you have to live with them. Some mistakes are irreversible. Maybe you'll move on for a moment, but then you'll glance in the mirror and be reminded of that choice all over again. Even years later, the decisions leaves a mark. When you're dealing with an irreversible choice, move slowly and think carefully. Especially when you're busting in girls and you feel like you're just fucking horned up and you're like, oh, fuck yeah. it. That's a tattoo. That is bigger than a tattoo, dude. It's like a face tat, bro. The decision leaves a mark. When you're dealing with an irreversible choice, there's, there's move two slowly. There's beautiful children here now. It's, what do you mean? And, you, and hope they're doing good. They are. They're doing good. Are they? What I've heard through the grapevine. Well, that's good. Science fiction writer Philip K. Dick here on facing the hard things in life. Reality denied comes back to haunt. Author and poet Ursula on perseverance. No darkness lasts forever. All right, that's pretty good there. MMA news. There hasn't much been much MMA news here. Tyson Fury vows to rematch Francis Ngannou in the future. Dismisses retirement talk, which is crazy if you guys watch the keeping up with the furies on uh netflix it's like god damn but that he's just a crazy motherfucker that's the thing about i was talking to this other coach and he was talking about this guy is just like a he's just like a a, a freak he's just like a, a ticking time bomb or he's just a weirdo i'm like dude everyone who wants to fight people for a living they want to get locked in the cage and then fist fight a guy and they want to make money doing that they're gonna be off they're going to be off. Every fighter isn't going to just be this respectful, okay, I'm going to do everything right. I'm a, Fighters are fucking crazies. Crazy. A lot of them have issues, too. So accepting that and be like, damn, yeah. It's not bad if a fighter's crazy. Sometimes it's not bad if a, if a fighter, is su a guy comes in and he's super confident and almost cocky. Some coaches think you just need to beat that out of them. And humble them up. And some and sometimes that will work with people, but sometimes that'll demoralize people and they won't want to fight anymore. So finding ways to have that kid keep his confidence and still be able to push him in training, make sure he's growing and learning. Yeah, he's going to get his ass kicked, but if he's cocky and confident and coming back, that's good. But, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that go bad before. When you have this, this kid who's a good athlete, pretty confident, but then you bring him in the training room, just break him down. Just break him. Just beat the fuck out of him every practice just to humble him. It's like that's that can work to, with some people, but some people, they'll be like, fuck this. I don't, I don't even want to do this anymore sometimes. Okay, we got uh, Sean O'Malley wants to put the lights out on dangerous Ilya Topuria. Again, another one people be like, you're fucking crazy. It's like, dude. 
I just dropped a video on my YouTube. It's actually live right now if you want to go check it out, breaking down why I think that is a winnable fight for us. You can look at us like we're crazy, whatever. I've been in the same room with these guys. Ilya is not huge. He's way shorter than Sean. He is a, I don't know. You guys can watch that video. I break it down. I break it down some of the things he does. Ilya is one of my favorite fucking fighters to watch, though. I tell you what, that guy is so skilled. In my opinion, probably the most sound boxer in the UFC. Good black belt in jiu-jitsu. Wrestled since he was a kid. He he is an animal. But is there ways we could beat him? Yes, there is. Um, Gino Carano files lawsuit funded by Elon Musk against Disney over firing the Mandalorian. Oh, what the hell? Nobody gives <laughs> a fuck. Yeah, no shit. Sure, sure, Gina sure, Carano sure. is fucking hot, though. She really is. All right, let's hit some of these rapid fires here on uh, Snapchat. Let me find him here. One second, ladies and gentlemen. Jay, what do you got on agenda for today? <clears throat> you got to edit this pod. Got to go home, take pictures for some t-shirts, teach later. Nice. Boys and girls. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's, let's just rip through them quick. If they suck, we'll go past them. If they if, they're, if I got something to say, if you guys got something to say, let's re- let it rip. My girlfriend of five years had sex with another guy on her lunch break. <gasps> what is the next move? Fuck. Get a new bitch. <laughs> for five yeah. years, bro. My girlfriend, fought, I mean, it's she, probably the beginning of the end right there. Yeah. And how'd you find out? That's how I'm curious, Danny. Did she tell you? Did you find out through the grapevine? Fuck, bro. It might be It might be time to let it go. Yeah, I would It depends it. who you're listening to. I mean, if you're listening to Andrew Tate, he's going to say, fucking peace out. A lot of these guys are going to say peace out. And that might be a good idea because they say when a girl cheats. Yeah, I was about to say it's different. I feel like huh? it depends on different. if it eats at you. Like if, if it bothers you. Like if it doesn't bother you, fuck it. But if it bothers you, then don't stay. How would, it's it, gonna not, make how you would it not bother you? Bother yeah, you. for real. Uh, you're like Ian Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dom. Here uh, we go. Danny, yeah. Fuck, bro. I would talk to her, but yeah, I would probably end it. But what if they got a whole kid? Like, there's there's a lot yeah. there. There's what a lot they have, kid, they, they have, I mean, they Has have. Has he cheated before and she did that back to you or what? They bought their house together or they wrote. There's a lot there. A lot. Yeah, it's hard. I need some more uh, stuff here there. Uh, Dom, how does Tim not get fried in the sun? What sunscreen does he wear, if any? You know what? I don't even go in the sun that much. Same. I mean, I don't. Sometimes I do. Rarely. I don't wear sunscreen. Scott Ponderosa, keep it going, man. You're making a difference in people's lives that, that will last a lifetime. Need more people like you in this world. Glad Tommy Gunn has a great mentor. That's good, Scott. Hopefully you can spread the, spread the, spread the good word also. Shout out Tommy Gunn. Yep. Tommy Gunn Mafia. Yep. How much money would it take for you to take a fight in the UFC days? I mean, dude, like I said, I got so much shit. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't even take a fight for 10 G's, bro. An amateur fight? (laughs) Fuck no. What? Gee. Just let it, dude. 50 bands. What's up? 10 G's. No, my word. Go scrap. Literally, a fight is over. Like that. Nah, I need 50K. At least. I'll take a fight. Because you're, you're worried about getting hurt? Nah, it's, it's not worth it. 10 G's? Yeah, what if I do get hurt and that's fucking more than medical bills? No, no. The, well, the, the, the. 10 G's not worth it, in my opinion. The promotions cover your medical bills. They're they're all insured. I still need 50K at least. Really? Just Minimum. for any fight? I don't give a fuck. That's crazy. You I probably mean, need like what? Like 500K? No. Right now? No, not that it? much. I'll take 1K. I do. A, I'd fight for hundred G's. Hundred G's, but so but dude, back in the day, back I feel like in the that's day, very possible. Someone would do it for you. When we were coming up, dude, we were trying to fight as much as possible for free, as much as possible. But the thing is, the difference between me and you guys is, you guys want to fight. I don't care to fight. I have to. I don't like, even we, care about jujitsu. In a way, like we gotta fight too. Though. I don't. Not really. I don't. Well, I don't you I, don't have to. Back in the days, though, like when you was like hurting for bread. Sean has to. I just was obsessed with it. I think I just wanted respect from people. I wanted yeah. to be respect. I don't know what it was, but I thought it was cool too. I remember my dad watching it, thinking it's cool. I'm like, fuck, I want to do that. Just have wanting to be cool. For me, it's, it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel more alive. Like just the idea that I'm about to fight in a month <laughs> Tim. or two. Tim's face. Rick's last meal if he were on death. <laughs> hey, uh, Frank, what's your favorite food? Yeah. 
Food. Yum yum. Munch munch. What's your favorite food? Pussy. Pizza. Pussy. Tacos. Turkey. Cheese cheeseburgers. Enchiladas. Tacos. Taco. <laughs> Hell yeah! I gotta give. You, I might have to give you some tacos after this, Frankie. That's it. I love them tacos too, brother. Okay. Can you? Me, 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 me. Without divulging too much, is there uh, any system method to when Shug's changes stances, or is it more based on opponent circumstances? You gotta keep that confidential right now. But for him, it's just, he's a good athlete. He's just flowing in there, letting it rip. Dill, you thought about getting a coach of another, of another popular fighter? Could be cool. Maybe Eric Nixick. That's the thing. I mean, you bring in all these people. Some people want to come train here, and I gotta tell these guys. I'm like, I don't have, t- I don't have a lot of time. I'm pretty spread thin on my time. I got shit that I'm doing, and and also my chill time's fucking important. I can't be giving away my chill time. That's where I get my ideas. That's where I get creative. That's where I enjoy it. That's my, I enjoy my chill time. So I can't be just doing that and just giving my time to all these fighters because fighters are so quick to just get up and dip and you just spent hours and hours with them. When you, I could have been chilling with Mariah. I could have been chilling with my dogs. I could have been learning. I could have been reading my own thing, create my own content, or I'm spending all this time with these fighters and then one thing goes wrong and they go, they dip. So it's like, I don't want not, I don't want to look to bring in a bunch of fighters that I'm personally have to train. That's why I have great coaches and I pay them good. I have Dracar close. I have Courtney Casey. I have now I have Mark Martin teaching wrestling. I have good jujitsu instructors. I have really good coaches too. So you can come be a part of the program and get good. And then when you're taking my classes, I'm going to help you as much as I can. Any little tips, I'm going to try to help. I don't, I, and I don't want to travel a ton, a ton, a ton. A lot of these fight coaches, they're traveling every single week. They're going and staying in a hotel from Wednesday to Sunday or Tuesday to Sunday all week sitting in a hotel away from what they're, what they're doing. So I, I don't really, I'm not like punk. I don't really want to do that. Uh, why is Sugar Shane so scared of his mama? Don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. But isn't that the truth? Um, here we go. Can chicks have dicks? Yeah. I'd say yeah. Yeah. No. Hey. I say yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'll be doing that. What are your personal <laughs> limits, your limits you give yourself for smoking the grass? Yesterday I didn't smoke any grass. I think the day before I might have, wait. Yeah, Monday I didn't smoke. Tuesday I didn't smoke. Sunday I got I smoked a lot. It's just kind of when I just have it. You know what? Here's a little bag of smoke right here. You want some, Frankie? You want some? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Breathe it in. <laughs> Bye-bye, Frank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frank really mean for real. Yeah, I know he is. Frank's shy. I'll see you in the future. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> Uh yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I just don't smoke a ton. Sometimes, sometimes right. I do. Sometimes, don't. most important, important part of being able to perform fight night. What did you do the previous six weeks? Did you train hard? Did you do everything you need to do? Then you'll probably be ready to perform. If you're skipping, the, skipping these workouts, you're skipping the sparring, you're skipping the strength conditioning, uh, you're skipping all these things. You, there's it's a good chance you might not perform, brother. Did you see this? Uh, I was drinking every day for three to four weeks. Uh, Volk. On before he fought Islam again. See, I be, I believe that he's dude. cap or he's for real. I I be, he's probably for real. He took that Islam fight on such short notice, dude. Um, that's why I feel like I I I did do another breakdown video of the Ilya Volk fight. That dude's another fucking animal. He's fought these boxers that are so goddamn good. Max Holloway's so good. These tall strikers that are so good. And he's a short little guy, and he whoops them. He gets their number. So Ilya's stance is so sideways. It's so it's such a like a boxer stance where their, their legs are really linear, and their legs are really wide. And Volk's fast with those leg kicks. He's good at hiding those leg kicks. So we'll see how Ilya can take care of those. Why do I feel like I'm not getting any better sometimes? I'm constantly working, but sometimes I just feel stag. You guys feel like that with Jits ever? Yeah. 
Full time. Zave, you got to be feeling like you're getting better every day, don't you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. At your point. Yeah. Yeah, white belt. I feel like at purple, it's just kind of like. Sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm just going through the motions at times. You've been doing leg locks, though. You've been liking that. Yeah. I guess so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, what up, Big Red? Big Love from Australia. was wondering if you and Trigger were planning on taking a trip down here at any point following. Uh, probably one time. Probably sometimes. The journey about for about years now has changed my life. Love you, Jobins. Bortsy. Love you, too, brother. Maybe one day we'll be down there. Um, This was for rick how much money do you make begging on the street per day you know what rick never begs rick's never had a sign he never fucking asks for money for real ever he's always down there chilling kicking it with the peeps <laughs> you give me a dollar cool mm-hmm. that's fine that's yeah that's i'd love to hear frank's on. mindset on that he's stoic as fuck yeah he's he's in his own, <laughs> he's in his own head right now okay rick are you still <laughs> dropping fudge pops Behind the Burger King. <laughs> yeah, well, the, he said the one of the workers at Burger King said Rick was dropping some turds behind the shop, and Rick denied it. I don't know. What the hell was it? Okay, talk about the mental side of recovering from a serious injury like Achilles. I was pumped. I mean, when this happened, I was like, holy fuck. This is, this is the biggest ligament in my body. and just tore off my bone. Everything I researched, they said it's way worse than ACL. The recovery's a year. I'm like, dude, I got too many people that are looking at me how to recover from an injury. And if I'm giving anyone advice on shit, I need to do it myself. So I've been doing pretty good. I'm just keeping keep myself busy, doing everything I can, eating good, and uh, that's, that's it. Still reading books. Justin Sanchez, does protecting the belt make this fight camp feel any different than others? Not really. Not really. It's the same. Every single fight just talk about what we think is going to work, what we think is not. He does a strength conditioning with Brandon. We do pads. We brainstorm. Get good sparring. And every everyone's pretty much the same. What happens when Schmidt doesn't finish them podcasts? PKC, he's finishing those bot podcasts. And if he doesn't, then he might be rooming up with old Frank. <laughs> Down there on 83rd in Peoria, huh, Frank? <laughs> Fast Eddie here. Show him show him the Apple Vision. Okay, damn, the Apple Vision. I would love to do that. I don't know if I'm going to scoop one of those. I kind of want to. You probably could. Just review it. Text right off. But what would I do on it? Check my morning emails? Who knows? Just use it and then raffle it off on Patreon. Mm -hmm. You could watch, watch something on the left. Have a little <laughs> porn on the right. Have a little jerk. <laughs> they don't excite me. Do they excite you? Not really. I don't really care. I'm like, this. we got it right here. That's what I'm saying. We got it right here, but the difference is, is you go, you move it like this. I don't know. I think it is very video gamey, and I just never been into video games, so I don't know if that's why it doesn't like, doesn't do anything for me. Is that what it is? Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, next week you'll have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple <laughs> months advance. Yeah, we fire. Uh, what keeps you motivated in a situation where there's no hope? Family and love, the usual BS answer is all I've heard, but what is the real factor that keeps you going? No hope. I'd have, yeah, you'd have to get it, get going on that one. It's like no hope, no hope for what? No hope for your health, no hope for your family, no hope for you got legs or yeah, no hope. What would we, about, about what, brother? Okay. Ask him if killing the man has a big impact on his life. Uh, that was for Rick. Rick actually did kill a fella and um, it was in self-defense. So just remember that it was a poker hand and it got out of hand and it was Rick's like, either I'm either going to be killed or I kill this guy. And I think he didn't mean to kill him. I think he meant to shoot him in the leg, but it hit an artery and there he went. What would be the best advice you'd give your do to your younger self? What about you, Jay? Anything? Anything? I would say just, keep, I feel like I uh, just keep doing what I was doing. Everything's going to work out type shit. Uh, Zave, what would you tell if you could talk to your 17-year-old self right now? I tell myself to stay independent, um, focus on my goals. Don't bust on that. Yeah, and work hard every day instead of being worried about females. Would you say put on a condom? Uh, No, I still don't. I still don't. I wouldn't say that. Really? Because really? it's going to turn out good. Everything would turn out good. 
that's the thing that people don't see. They're just looking at the now and the past. They're not thinking about what's going to come out of everything. And maybe everything does happen for a reason. Maybe not. Either way, <laughs> it'll end up good. Yeah, but people, <laughs> blinking your eyes like people always probably look at the, the, <laughs> what kind of habits you have right now, too. Yeah. And, that, and that might give you a little good foreshadow of the future. Would you say your habits are dialed with your jobs and stuff? Not with my jobs, no. I d I'm not, I'm just not good at keeping a job. But I feel like a lot of successful people can say that, that they weren't good at keeping a job, that they'd, like, so we'll just see in the future, we'll see what happens. What would you, what would <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you gotta, like, accept that you're gonna work a regular I, job. I've been working every day this whole month, bro. I've worked, well, every day in January I worked. It's not, it's not bad to it's have a regular job. I know no, it's not zero that bad. Percent. No, it's not bad. And, I mean... And if you if you create responsibilities for yourself, you have to have a job. Yeah, for sure. What would you tell yourself, Tim? Same shit. I mean, just fucking. Keep doing just don't worry. Doing. Just don't worry. Keep going, Red. Just keep having hope. What is the easiest? And know what I'd say though. I'd say it, when things. I'd tell myself when things change paths a little bit, just accept it. Yeah. Because that was scary. Accepting a little bit. Just like. Like when you had your injuries. Well, I'm just grinding, I'm grinding for this first years and years and years, improving my skills in MMA, and then just figuring like, damn, I might not even get into the UFC. I'm not, I'm, but then it just accepted this path, and it took me to a yeah. way better, happier, healthier path, and I have all my brain cells, and it feels good. Yes. What is the easiest, most effective MMA technique? MMA technique. I'm guessing a jab, teep, but I'm sort of asking about the ground game. There's, there's no. There's no tech. There's no, there's no most one. effective uh -huh. thing. Every person's gonna react different to different things. Every person's explosiveness is gonna be different. Every person's body type is gonna be different. So it's different for every single person. Christian Navid Navida, uh, go to pickup line for chicks. I hear these guys say like the best way to get a chick is just don't really give them your attention. Make them. Don't show them that you're interested in them and stuff. But then it's like, how are they ever going to... Got that mean Riz? Law of attraction, bro. That's the thing. Girls become attracted to certain people. So like, you just got to be the one that's attracting them. That was deep. Damn. That, was, that, that, was too, that made me think. <laughs> got me in my it's thoughts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dude, that's such a vague question. Like, It's like, yeah. are you trying to fuck her or are you trying to date her? <laughs> There's two different vibes. Max says, how's Tim's Riz? <laughs> be honest with it it's honest pretty fine <laughs> <laughs> be honest it's geez. sick bro I fuck with it alright uh, thanks you're like confident in like actually going up and saying something yeah I'm not that confident yeah how's I my Riz G it's have you seen my it's pretty good Frankie boy look what's up Frankie boy how you doing President Brock nice to meet you <laughs> yeah good to see you <laughs> um best way yeah, you know, Riz is funny as Shane's. If that girl don't know who Shane is, then that Riz ain't. <laughs> it ain't there. Best way to feel over, better overall other than eating well? I mean, we talk about it every episode. It gets boring as fuck, brother. Just get in a good routine of sleep. Stay hydrated. There you go. Arizona over Montana? I would say yes, just because <coughs> because what I like to do, I mean, I like eating really good food on every corner. There's some good-ass restaurant to eat. The weather is really good 70% of the time. It's beautiful outside. Um, yeah, and there's just so many different athletes, and I, I don't know. I really like it. I like Montana, too, for certain things. Fresh air. Fresh air. Um that's it fresh air is good <laughs> trees it's nice the trees feel good that's it though oh. quickest way to be a blue belt train which is a crazy thing to say i mean it's crazy it's hard to figure out too quickest way to be a blue belt you gotta train like for real you go to practice every week three times if not more it's wild and then oh, and then in like six seven eight months maybe you get a blue belt so that's the that's the craziest thing. That's the quickest way to do it. It's training. It's wild to think. Man, it's a secret it. that people don't know. <laughs> Favorite advice for up and coming fighters on going to big camp versus small, dude. You got to go there and just feel the vibe out. Feel, do you like the energy there? Do you like the people there? Do you feel like you can enjoy going there every day? 
if you hate going there every day, you hate the coach, the coach maybe doesn't respect you, you hate the coach, the teammates don't really treat you great, and it's just not a good vibe, then it's probably not going to last. So if it's go in there, feel the vibe out a little bit, see if you like the coach, see if you like the people. And if you do, then you do. Because you can always train somewhere and then spar somewhere else. Most gyms allow that. Some some don't. Most gyms do. And if someone comes to my gym and they're like, hey, there's a, a Muay Thai coach or something that I really vibe with and I get good work with him. Oh, sweet, brother. Go do it. Get some good work with him. Or there's a, I go to this wrestling academy and I really like the coach there. Me and him have a great wrestling. Go there then. What's best for you? Hey, boss, talk about to us about injury prevention through things we can do like stretches post-workout. It just sucks because I get injured. I try to preach about that stuff, but it's just I can't really. If I was a dude who never got injured, then I'd be able to give you good advice. But I try to do all the shit. All the shit. What do you think separates average strikers from elite strikers? Why do some people look great hitting pads but aren't that good in sparring? Because when you're hitting pads, the guy's not trying to hurt you back. And when someone's trying to hurt you back, the energy's different. Your emotions are different. You're you're more tense. You're more a little, like, scared. Elite as strikers, they just have really good eyes, and they have really good reaction time. And they're comfortable. I've noticed that. Like, the better people are, they seem more comfortable. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just years of doing it, getting proficient with it. When you're proficient at something, you're not guessing. That's when people, you get in a street fight. If I get in a street fight with some guy... Every position, especially on the ground, and, or and every position we're in, he's guessing and he's using a lot of energy, using a lot of strength, bucking around, doesn't know where he's going. Where we know, I mean, if you're good at jiu-jitsu, you know every, where you're going. If I'm in side control, I know where I'm going. If I'm on the back, I know where I'm going. If I'm on top of someone, I know where I'm going. And this person's guessing. The person that's guessing and that's really tense the whole time, they're going to fucking gas out. So I'd say that. What do you do when feeling down? How do you help yourself out of that spot? Dude, I fucking go jump in that plunge, soak my tits, drink a good glass of water, and smoke some Mary J, and then my mindset's completely different. And it's hard because, I mean, when you can't work out and you're injured, it's easy to get fucking pissed off and start acting like a bitch and start feeling sorry for yourself and start being depressed because you're not working out. So... Jumping in that cold plunge helps me and just pushing yourself mentally in some other way. It helps. What you know about the gold brick of cheese? I don't know about that, JW. <laughs> this one's for Joe Riggs. Joe Riggs isn't here. This one's for Rick. Rick's not here. Um, yeah, I'm about to guess Cap. Yeah, yep. What podcast you got and where do I find out? Um, Manual, I'll let you know here. Mar, My mom... A couple points on faith, Tim. In that article I sent you, I noticed you didn't get a chance to talk about faith much in your last podcast. So there you go. Enjoy. Um, what did that What did that article say? I'm just I'm just I'm just curious here. I mean, maybe I'll try to find it. This is the article on JW.org because I did share something on my pod, and we talked about it before about that guy Lawrence Krauss talking about faith and how faith isn't isn't reality you can have faith but it's not reality um this one this is yeah the jw.org and i'll just go through definition faith is assured expectation of things hoped for see how they word this stuff faith is an assured expectation of things hoped for the evident demonstration of realities though not <clears throat> held true faith is not credulity that is a readiness to believe something without sound evidence or just because a person wants it to be so. Genuine faith requires basic or fundamental knowledge, acquaintance with evidence. See, I don't know if that's the truth there, though. That's the thing. Faith. No, it's the truth. Acquaintance with evidence. It's like, okay, so what evidence we have here? When we come to faith, when we talk to faith, and, and not evidence, it's like, yep, that's just... I believe it because I read it in the Bible. It's, I want to see. I'm going to see some evidence, almost some scientific evidence. Like if I say I can jump on that table, then I can, and I have some evidence why. Or it's like genuine faith requires a basic or fundamental knowledge or acquaintance 
with evidence as well as heartfelt appreciation of what the evidence indicates. Thus, although it is impossible to have real faith without accurate knowledge, the Bible says that is with the heart that one exercises faith. That's, I mean, I, I'm... That's kind of just saying, like, what you know is possible. Yeah, I, I want to... I have like faith. I, have faith. Faith. I know this is possible. I can do yeah, it. I have faith in my heart that I can be in the NBA. Yeah, me. Okay, then that, that's, that's kind of a delusional faith. Why is it delusional? Because Tim definitely can't go to the... You definitely can't either. Yes. Why is I it mean, delusional? That's so, that's so... I mean, that's... You're projecting. There's there's just there's true faiths or whatever, and there's delusional faiths. But who's to say it was true and what's not? And what faith is... What, 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 I guess the human race. I'm sure no, what, a lot of people would agree with When me. it comes to faith and, and religions, though, the well, Jehovah's Witnesses say there's going to be a paradise, there's going to be a resurrection. The know. Christians say something different. So what faith... I don't, I don't, know. I don't want to say anything about that. Why are you gonna get canceled? Why do so many people not have faith? Faith is a fruit of God's spirit, and God gladly gives His spirit to those who seek it. So, what so do you mean when you say so, faith? So, persons without faith are not seeking that spirit, or they are doing so for a wrong purpose and are resisting its operation in their lives. Many things influence this: lack of accurate Bible knowledge. The Bible is a product of God's spirit being inspired by God. So if we had a guy in this day, so this is inspired by God and the Bible was written through people who God was talking to, if I'm correct. If we had a guy in this day and age that came up to us and said, hey, God is talking to me. God, I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, God is talking to me and I'm writing these scriptures and they're deep and they're deep. How many people would believe him? Probably a lot. You think? I'd be like, that's so. fire. No, they wouldn't, Jay. Yeah, if he was like someone of uh, people do that though. If he had a lot like, of people do that. What if he had good backing or something? Like he he was like a respected dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Would my mom would my mom believe this guy or who would believe this guy? And the stuff he's writing is like good. Yeah, I think he would. He'd get some followers. Yeah, I would think so. I I mean I think most people would be like if what? this guy's fucking wacky. Random? This guy's just wacky. What if he went on the Joe Rogan and he got like Joe Rogan's cosign? I mean, yeah, anything you know that's I mean? different. But then it's like, oh, damn, so we just follow this guy now. Everyone listens to this guy and follows him, and he makes the rules for us now because he's talking. <laughs> I feel like he'd get some people behind yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. Like, you see all those cult leaders and shit. Yeah. So persons without faith are not seeking that spirit, or they are doing so for a wrong purpose, or are resisting its operation in their lives. Many things influence this lack of accurate Bible knowledge. The Bible is a product of God's spirit being inspired by God. Um, failure to study it hinders any development of true faith. Although church members may have Bibles, it, if they have been taught the ideas of men instead of the Word of God, they will lack f real faith in God and His purpose to solve life's problems. They will be inclined to rely on their own ideas and those other humans. Yeah, I mean, to solve life problems, you can just pray you can pray and I and hope that this God's going to help you, or you can take some actions and start getting your your health in line. No, you can, no, 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 don't agree. <laughs> don't agree. Just he keep said, surfing. He, he said, yeah. <laughs> no, but you, you'll get your own stuff dialed in, and you'll try to repair the relationships. Or to solve life's problems, they will incline to run on their own. Sometimes, I mean, your own ideas, or some people need it, though. Sometimes they need just something. Like, yeah, oh God, my life's so shitty, but I know God. God's there and God's he's looking out me. for me. I mean, it's good good for a lot, I think. Yeah, I agree. Disillusionment with religion. Many have been disillusioned by the hypocrisy of the churches of Christendom, which claim to teach God's word but fail to live in harmony with what it says. That's every Christian I know. I know they're trying to. Yeah. But they're not. Living by God's word. Well, I mean, it, yeah. people say, oh, yeah, I'm Christian, or even I'm a Jehovah's Witness, or whatever religion. I'm this, I'm this. But then they don't go by what the Bible says they're supposed to do. So many yeah. have been delusioned by the hypocrisy, which claim to teach God's word, but to fail to live in harmony with what it says. Others were adherents to non-Christian religion, but they saw bad fruitage from its practices or found that their beliefs did not really help them to cope with the problems of life, lacking accurate knowledge of the true God, such persons draw away from everything related to religion. God, I should just fucking old, pick up that old Bible and just read it. It's just I hard. Like there's it, a lot of good in it, though. There's dude, there's of tons good. of good in it. Yeah. A lot, most of it is really, really good. But there's so many words that are so 
people read this Bible and they read these words, they don't even know what the word is. And they're like, wow, that's just deep. I don't even know what that word means, but that's, it must mean something cool. Every fucking word I'm not sure of, I'm going to pull up my phone. I'm going to Google it and be like, how can that be interpreted in a different way? Yeah. Um, here, let me go with this one. Most people do not understand why God permits wickedness and so blame him for all the bad things that take place. Sandy Hook shooting. Where kids, all these kids just die. Or yeah. all these shootings where it's, it's That's like... That's where you got to realize what God actually is. What is it then? It's just, it's not what you're thinking of. It's like when you're thinking of God, it's not like... I don't I don't, I don't follow any religions. Like I don't agree. Like I don't... But um, I just do think... God is something, but it's just not like when you're thinking of God right now, that, that's not what it is. Uh, yeah, it could be something way past our knowledge, which it probably is that we can't even wrap our minds around. God permits wickedness and so blame him for all the bad things. That they, they do not realize that man's inclination toward badness is not because of God's will, but because of the sin of Adam. They may be unaware of the existence of Satan, the devil and his influence on world affairs. So they ascribe to God, the vile things perpetrated, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing. I just, I think religion is really good for a lot of people. I think, it, I think it really is. And a lot of people really need it. But I think also, it might be bad for a lot of people too, though. Mm, I've noticed that. Personally, why? Like girls. Well, guys that have killed, I mean, people who kill. Because the girls, like there's a lot religion. of girls that would like say they're Christian, this and that. And then they get with you and then like they joke about it and like they like. Like girls are oh, yeah. The, I mean, they they do it because they're fearful of going to hell. So you might as well just say you're Christian. As long as you just say you're Christian, doesn't matter what you do. You, <laughs> that's what they do it for. I mean, a lot a lot of people. They just think they for, like. Every, I guess that's how it is though. In Christianity, every day you're forgiven, right? So. Uh, yep. Don't matter. Yeah, you can do whatever you want if you're a Christian. Wake up the next day, bam. But well, is is God power enough, powerful enough to know your intentions? Exactly. So you have saying. to, and when you ask for forgiveness, you have to actually want forgiveness and try to be better, or you can just do it. Yeah, no, I don't know. Do you think it would be worth it to take Paul Check's holistic lifestyle coaching course? Wasn't sure if you knew anything about it from talking to him. Thanks, Timbo. Corbin, you know what? He actually gave me for free his course, and I sat down and I did the whole thing with Mariah, too. And it was really good. It was really, really good, and it definitely took our relationship to another level because it put her on the same track of how important it is, the the foods, the water, the communication, the moving your body, um, the th thinking, breathing, eating, drinking, moving, sleeping. He talks a lot about those things in detail. I, I think it's really good. I loved it. What's Xavier's goal? This is what Rahelio says. <clears throat> My goal. I don't have. I don't have like an end goal. I just want to be, um, actually, yeah, in, inspire kids, inspire the youth. Who's the worst Rizzer in the clan? <laughs> inspire the youth. Uh, who? I'm trying to think out of the whole crew. The worst? Yeah, probably Schmidt. But he's been, he's been clapping cheeks. I know. So, so. who's to say? I'm to say. <laughs> uh, who read? Who would win in an MMA match, Rick or Schmitty? Uh, Schmitty, just Rick's not. Rick's not old. in good shape to fight right now. He's just not. One leg kick to the leg <laughs> that got shot. It still has the bullet in the leg, and he's hitting. The, he's hitting the canvas. Rick's Remember old. when we pulled up on Rick? No, I think that was with Dal. We pulled up to pick up Rick to go eat some lunch or something. And he was about to scrap this other little Indian guy. At the I wasn't way. there. I'm like Rick, you don't need to be fighting, dude. It's Barely slow. fucking walk. Too slow, too. Yeah. Timbo, would you, have you, or would you be open to getting the gooch sucked a bit? <laughs> uh, Depends. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> How do I pull out of a woman if I'm going numb from the waist down? Fucking pull out, dude. <laughs> just do it. Hey. Zave. Just keep surfing and zipping no, like, over there. Just chill, pull chill, out. Chill. Like, just pull out. Hey, Red Hawk, what is your favorite and least favorite part of being an MMA coach? Favorite part? I mean, I just, I just, I, I, I like it. There's, I like the, doing the whole thing. I like everything about it. Least favorite part? I don't think I really have a least favorite part Traveling at this moment. Traveling. We travel just enough to where every trip it's fun. And yeah. it's not like I got to go. 
most MMA coaches, you got to go on these trips and you have to rely on the fighter giving you some money for food or you have to rely on the fighter and you got to sleep in his hotel room and it's yeah. got to be. Now so you, Now you're balling though. So you I mean, not say balling, but I can go and I can get my own place and I can get my own food and it's like a little, I can Snapchat it and yeah. do that and I can do different things. So there's really nothing I don't like about being an MMA coach. It's MMA and a jiu-jitsu coach and owning my academy. It's literally my the best job in the world. I wouldn't trade it for any other job. Hundred percent. When was the last time you got to second base? What is second base? Fingering? I don't even know. Probably because I would think first is kissing, yeah. so second has like some oral shit. Oral shit. Or play. Is second base oral, Frank? You think? Like in your B, BJ. You like girls? Nah. No guys. Same. <laughs> he's so Bro, lit. he's fucking with us <laughs> he's fucking with us okay would you consider Eddie Alvarez a legend, legend of the sport hell yeah fuck yeah dude people newer fans of MMA have no idea that that's how sick some of the fights he's been in have been you watch some Eddie Alvarez fights in Bellator every fight it's just like a sprint from the first beginning whistle and it's just a badass fight Eddie Alvarez for sure is a legend who pulls more, JX or Schmidt? Come on. In the past two months? In the past two months? Two and two, probably. Yeah. Probably tied I haven't up. been trying, though. I don't try. Like, I genuinely Actively. don't try, yeah. Schmidt shoots his shot. Oh, yeah. He, 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 <laughs> he followed every single girl that Art follows and liked every one of them. Yeah. I, I don't. And then Schmidt showed oh. Art the girl he pulled and. Art's like, I'm all right, I'm following her. And he got, <laughs> he got freaked pissed. Out. He went back to the coffee shop just moping and uh, remember that's like, how our how boy feels? was? Our boy D. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I do, I do, I do. Um what was your first threesome like? It was pretty good. It, it was smooth. I watched some videos and uh um, <laughs> Were you nervous? I was definitely nervous. I definitely made it a lot. I was I made it a lot about Mariah. I'm not that dumb to be like have another girl and just, or and just be like, oh, just all about her. Like, you're like, Mariah, take a <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, so it worked out snap. good. I mean, I, I got to quick talk about that personal shit feel so that, much. Feel but that, feel that. It was great. Let's just say it was great. Okay. <laughs> what would be your advice be for people grinding day and day out at night, but also trying to maintain healthy sleep? Fuck, bro. Go back and listen to some old pods. This, we almost talk about every single podcast, Peyton. And some people, they want a certain answer. They think a certain answer is going to click right. It's going to be a basic fucking answer, dude. Ask yourself, if someone came to you and asked you that question, what would you say? They're like, hey, what would, you'd probably have the answer. So just do that. Um, other than that, what are we sitting at here, Jay? 58. 58 minutes, and we got the confidential pod. People have been loving it. It got over, I mean, over 1,000 members on patreon for a reason we have literally content from four or five years ago vlogs that jay's done um older content you can literally watch the whole rise of everything on patreon and now we're having a confidential show every week and on that confidential show i don't have to upload it to youtube i can upload it straight to patreon so it's not like it's getting blocked and all this stuff and then you can't upload it i can upload it straight to patreon so we literally can talk about whatever we want preferably 18 and older if you want to listen to it because we get a little crazy but that's a confidential pod that comes out every saturday video and audio you know you'll get a private spotify link also on patreon you get if you're the ten dollar tier then you get 30 percent off the thorn products which are the best third-party tested products supplements you're going to be able to find and uh so go check it out for the real supporters. If not, no problem at all, guys. Hope you like the show. Uh, this is us just shooting the shit, joking around, pretending we know shit, but we really don't know shit. So hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts below. And uh, love you guys. See you, I later. Love, See you later, Frank. I love sluts. See you later, Frank. I love sluts a lot. Good show. <laughs>